My Govana. My name is Tori Stenmark with the DIY Science Zone for Geek Girl Con. We are here in my kitchen uh, because, as we all know, baking is science for hungry people. I'm going to bake Lembus bread. Lembus bread is the elvish whey bread from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And what I have is a recipe that I adapted from one I found online that I really liked, and I've made a few tweaks over the years to get something that I find really delicious and also feels very authentic to the spirit of what Tolkien was trying to create and convey in, you know, our kitchen since we're not actually on Middle Earth. Equal parts white and whole wheat flour, baking powder, a little bit of kosher salt, some pecans, cloves, and cardamom to season it and some butter, which you want to keep cold in the fridge. We're going to grind those pecans up to a reasonably fine powder. Scoop those out. Make sure most of them have, in fact, ground up. Now, you might find that not all of the pieces grind, but there's, a, there's an easy solution for that. You take a food processor and combine pretty much all of those dry goods and process until they are smoothly mixed. to make sure you're getting a complete transfer using a spatula or other appropriate tool. You'd hate to leave some behind when you want all of that good, good flavor in your mix. Once it's well mixed, you're gonna bring in the butter, which you're gonna add in several small portions. Uh, like I said, keep that in the fridge, the colder, the better. Uh, definitely don't add it all at once. You wanna let the butter fat get coated with the flour and mix in in nice small portions. and just pulse that until it looks about done. You might need to get your hands in there to know for sure if it feels right. Dry, crumbly, thoroughly mixed. Transfer that over to a bowl because the food processor was pretty much full. And we're about to need our wet ingredients. Half and half are cream, brown sugar, honey, local is better, and apple cider. Local is also better for the cider if you can get it. Um, Add your sugars. I love having one of those uh, sticky liquid dispensers. They're very, very useful for this kind of thing. Add all your wet things and mix them in carefully by hand. You might find that it's still a little bit dry and crumbly, in which case we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit extra dairy. Get down at eye level with your ingredients when you're measuring them for the liquids to make sure you get, in this case, one ounce accurately measured. You go ahead and mix that in. It might take a fair amount of mixing. That's fine. And you're going to need to get your hands in there again to make sure you've got a soft, sticky dough that will stick together. Flour your work surface. And make sure that you accurately draw the rune on the door that will let the rest of the dwarves know that, in fact, we're having a party here tonight. Or not. Turn out your dough. And you're going to need a hand and knead that a little bit to make sure it's evenly mixed and distributed and incorporate a little bit of last extra flour. You want it to be nice and soft and respond well when smacked. Flour that surface again and flour your rolling pin and roll it out till it's about half an inch thick or so. You might need to go for this a little bit. Um, get it roughly rectangular-ish. Um, and then you want to grease your baking pans. This is a trick I love. Uh, put the pans on the dishwasher door so that the overspray ends up in the dishwasher for the most part. You might need to wipe down your floor a little bit, but you should do that anyway. Uh, I have a spatula, conveniently enough, that's three inches uh, square or roughly square. So I just use that as a marker on um, but I like the three inch square size. You can make them a little bigger or smaller if you really wanted to. You put those on that greased cookie sheet and then you're gonna slash them so that you get uh, some decorative markings. Uh, it will also help it bake more evenly and make it easier to break when you're eating them. Slide those in the oven like so. We're gonna set two different timers, one for the full length of time, which is about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on your particular oven, but you need to set a second timer for half the time because we're gonna rotate them halfway through. 
Speaking of rotating, here we go. Turn the pans individually and trade which shelf they are on. Oh yeah, these look perfect. Of course we can't test them yet since they're still quite warm, but these look really good to me. Um, because they're already kind of a nice light brown color, it's hard to see when they've turned a golden brown. Um, but you do see a little bit of browning right in around the edges here, around just barely around the corner. And that's really where you want it. You don't want them to get too much um, darker than that because um, you want them to stay nice and soft. So we will set those there, let them cool down, and we'll come back and try them. great color and a really nice texture as we break them open here. These go really well with whipped or Devonshire cream or whatever kind of jam you might want to put on them or just as they are. It's really good. You get a lot of good flavor profile from the various spices that are in there. That's not too crumbly. It's not too sweet. Um, it's surprisingly filling. That's the great thing about this is it's actually elven whey bread. Like you could eat something like this and it's not, it's not going to feed a grown man for a full day, but um, it definitely is more filling than like an average scone.